Okay. So we're all set. So I'm, I'm going to start. The webinar is officially starting. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bharti Thakur, uh, founder and CEO of New Millennium Education Partners. And I'm totally amped and excited and thrilled to be here with some of the brightest minds in the education space. Um, and I'm delighted to welcome our wonderful attendees on our worldwide webinar. Uh, the moment I was asked to host this webinar, I immediately said yes. Um, and then I went to look up how to host a webinar, which meant uh, multiple Zoom training sessions, lots of uncertainty. And here we are, and hopefully it'll all go smoothly. Um, our uh, topic today is unstoppable during uncertainty. And um, the conversation is about developing the right mindset to cope with life's unforeseen challenges. And we will learn various ways in which this can be done. Um, first off, I just want to say this webinar is not about coronavirus, like every webinar right now is. Um, yes, the virus and the lockdown has caused uncertainty in our lives. And for most of us, this is a very uncomfortable emotion. Um, for the most part, we do our best to control our lives. We set goals, we develop strategy, we work towards achieving the results we envision. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, life doesn't always pan out the way we expect it. And uh, we have plans and suddenly life throws us these curveballs like the coronavirus. And suddenly, you know, you feel powerless over the direction of your life. Um, so many of us had plans when COVID hit and people had acquisitions going on, students had board exams, which they've been studying like their whole lives for, and weddings were planned and suddenly it's all out of control. So this can bring up a lot of stress and anxiety and chronic worry and also deeper locked up emotions about the past or the future. So each one of us here has had challenges, either personal relationships, family or work that perhaps Anand, um, the world's leading uh, peak performance and mental health expert, would like to call upon our panelists to express some challenges that they um, may have faced or currently face before giving us the strategies on learning how to cope and how to stay inspired. So um, very quickly, uh, we have a wonderful array of participants who I'd like to um, introduce. Um, I'll start off with Vani Shastri. Vani is an alumna of the Wharton School for, um, at UPenn and co-founder and director of Seed Academy. It's a K-12 in Chennai and a Seed Play Schools across uh, South India, which is a premium group of preschools. And she's always looking to introduce innovative practices in education. Uh, we have Dr. Trista Ramamurthy, who is the founder of the Ekya chain of schools in Bangalore and vice president of the CMR group, which includes CMR University. And we happened to meet when she was working on her PhD in education from the King's College in London. And today she oversees 20,000 students across the schools and colleges. Mm. Um, and then we have Roshan Gandhi, who some of you may know as a well-known education speaker. Um, and he is in charge of modernization of operations at City Montessori Schools in Lucknow. Um, CMS is the world's largest group of city schools with a mind-boggling 55,000 students across 18 campuses. Um, so yeah, it's well known for that. And uh, then we have Vishnu Karthik, who is an Harvard alumnus and part of the leadership team of the Heritage Experiential Group of Schools, which is ranked the number one day school in India. And he has visited experiential schools around the world and is also a practitioner of yoga and Vedanta. So maybe we can, uh, you can show us some yoga asanas after this session. <laughs> um, next up, we have Puneet. Puneet Kothappa has a big responsibility on his young shoulders. He's the executive director of the Narayana Group, which operates over 500 schools in 12 states. Uh, Puneet has brought sweeping changes across education practices and introduction of technology through the Enspira Management Services Private Limited company, which he co-founded in 2013. And Enspira employs close to 15,000 people. 
And then last but not least, what can I say about myself? Um, I'm a media and communications graduate of Denison University. I founded NMEP about three years ago with a mission to start a dialogue that will move people to push for quality education. And this is why I love doing things like this, bringing together open-minded colleagues and friends to collaborate and ideate with. Um, I'm a communication strategist and the India head of the prestigious Swiss boarding school, College du Limon. So here is our exciting panel and we can soon begin with Anand's session, but I have to introduce Anand first, also known as AC. Um, he's live with us from London today. Um, AC is an international and YPO award-winning speaker. He is India's number one success coach and has coached teams from the IPL, the NBA, basketball championships to Bollywood and Hollywood actors and to companies like Google, Disney and Apple. And closer to home, I've seen him in action with schools. The school camps for parents and students at top schools like the Narayana School, the Aditya Birla World Academy, American School of Bombay, Oberoi, Vasant Valley are an absolutely thrilling experience. There's like music and dancing and laughing and crying. And it's just so amazing to see the courage these young people have to be vulnerable and just uh, you know, all they need is an inspiring coach like Anand to activate and empower them to become absolute champions. So I think now we're going to see a short intro video about Anand and then we shall start. Why wait till you're 80 to wonder if you're proud of yourself? Create a life now you can be proud of. A legacy now that really honors the footprints you left in this earth. My mission is to make your mission happen. Anand Chilani has written for The Simpsons, toured with the likes of Russell Peters and Martin Lawrence, and worked with peak performance coach Anthony Robbins. He's a wonderfully energetic, clear uh, person who really had some wonderful message. Speak into your heart and feel your heart and unblock it from that critic's voice and hear the voice of who you really are. He got the audience into a great state of receptivity and aliveness. No one was going to fall asleep after that. Now is my time! Now is my time! So I would uh, highly recommend him to you. I certainly had a great time with him and would be glad to work with him again. Energetic, supportive, loving, smart. That's it? Okay. That's the short version of the video. Okay. <laughs> All right. So since we have this rare opportunity to get this... Um, special session from Anand. Um, I'm going to ask our panelists to share some challenges they have faced or currently face um, at work or personal to kind of illustrate uh, issues that everyone faces in life. And since I know, I mean, uh, this, is a, this, is, this is a public webinar, I think I will, since I'm the host, go in, I'll take the deep dive first and uh, just quickly share uh, something that I'm currently feeling right now. So um, right now I have to admit is a tough moment for me. I feel pretty scared and anxious on the work front um, because uh, before COVID hit, um, work was going exceedingly well and I had plans and I had goals and they were carefully mapped out and within reach. Um, mm. Now suddenly after all those efforts, the outcomes no longer seem under my control. I feel insecure about these, you know, those very um, achievements, which um, I thought I could keep building on in the near future. Uh, but now it seems that these circumstances are uncontrollable. And, um, you know, it's obviously kind of uh, left me feeling, um, you know, thinking about worst case scenarios and what ifs. And this has left me feeling pretty emotionally vulnerable. And this heightened stress is also triggering worry about my personal life as well. Mm. So this is where I am at right now. Maybe um, let's just go around the room and see where everyone's yes. at. So do you want to, who wants to go next? Puneet, do you want to go I next? Could. Yeah, I could. Um, Anand, I think my story is that at this current time, we run such a large organization. Uh, yes. The critical challenge for us is in a large organization, usually we are very pre-planned. We know what's going to come next year. We know what's going to come six months, one year down the line. But what's happened yes. now is 
things have completely been thrown off track and even internally even experienced people people we trusted uh, previously don't know how the situation is going to be so to be a leader in a situation where uh, you know there's such a lack of clarity uh, going forward is a significant challenge and that's what's weighing down uh, on yes. my mind uh, you know some of the time at least most of the time these days can we maneuver a large organization uh, in a very difficult uh, period and are we doing the right things and are we able to foresee the future uh, the way it should pan out and are we doing all the right things got it got it I don't mind going next. Um, so for us, obviously, we have uh, different age groups that we're dealing with, right from, you know, one and a half year olds to, you know, older kids. And so for me, one of the things that I get worried about is how do I reach all these different age groups in the most effective way possible? We've been doing a lot. And something that I've been proud about is to see the mobility that my team has had so far. Um, in terms of how parents are going to react, how we're going to be able to really effectively do curriculum through, you know, screens. We're very anti-screen time, especially for our younger kids. Yes. So now how do we effectively use screen time, but have a good balance is something that, you know, I'm worried about. Leading through uncertainty, definitely, I would like to echo what Puneet is saying, because right now my teachers have to prepare two lesson plans for an online version and for an in-person version in case we're able to actually go ahead and get started. So a mm. lot of worries about how do we get our school ready to have kids in, even when we are given the students to do so, how do we get the right precautions and how do we make sure everyone stays safe and, you know, emotionally as well as physically. So that's something that's definitely on my mind. Yes, yes. Mm, I can go next. Um, I think my um, primary concern is how do how does a leader really judge the elasticity elasticity of their teachers students parents school leadership you know how do you gauge where everybody's comfort zone is and how do you plan for that and you know these are big leaps and decisions to be made many risks to be taken and you have to take a stand and really um, you know live by that and how do we know the decisions we're making is right and how yes. do you have uh, first build conviction for those decisions and what data points can one use to be able to build conviction for yourself and for your team and then uh, the larger audience and the stakeholders. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Who's next? Yeah, I can go next. Okay. I think um, the, the challenges of uncertainty are facing everyone right now. Yes. And I think we're all concerned about the exit strategy, what, how do we get out of all this? I mean, what's not a concern is that the, the teachers are doing their work and making online learning happen. That's, that's happening really well. But, you know, it's a big concern what happens to those few students who are inevitably unable to log on to the online system for whatever reason. What's going to happen to them afterwards? Uh, how are we going to cater to their needs? Um, and then, you know, it, it's a very uncertain uh, how, how much you can push people at this time. What can you expect from people? And leading at this time is, is a challenge in its own way, I think. Uh, I mean, personally, you know, I, I rely on a lot on the sort of personal connect, the face-to-face -face connect aspect of leadership. And now it's like that power is gone. You know, we, we, we have to adapt to new ways of leading and motivating people without yes. on, the, on the style and techniques that one normally has. Got it. Got it. Thank you, man. So I think it's my turn and uh, uh, Bharti, I should appreciate you for uh, uh, setting an exemplar of how to be vulnerable. And I'm really touched and thank you for sharing what you are experiencing. And I completely recognize uh, and many parts of it is something which I also experience. Uh, and I also concur and agree with some of the questions uh, and emotions uh, my fellow panelists have shared. Uh, yes. especially around uncertainty, especially around, uh, uh, around some of the technical challenges. Uh, but the two uh, questions I would love to find some answers mm -hmm. is how, how do we ensure as leaders uh, that we remain co uh, committed to our core purpose? Mm -hmm. so in times like these, we often, because of our nature of our role, we do have a heightened bias towards action. Yes. Sometimes that action might not 
uh, lead us to our core, but it just could be an immediate response to the crisis at hand. Which of course is important, but uh, I've often wondered, uh, are we doing as an institution, uh, are we moving towards our core or are we responding to a crisis? Those mm -hmm. two are necessarily the same. Uh, and second is how do I exhibit care? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, not just to myself, to my family, but to the larger community. How do I exhibit care? How do I exhibit empathy? Uh, and what could we do uh, as a community to hold them? For example, uh, there are times, and I'm sure a lot of us face this, that there are times you have parents having unreasonable expectations out of teachers who are really stretched, they're struggling, nobody has answers. Yes. Not at all, there are uh, common regulations which is make it unsustainable for private schools to operate. Yes. Uh, yet, you know, I, you need to have uh, a sense of positive assumption about why the government is doing, why the teachers are asking, why the parents are questioning. Uh, so yeah, those are two things. How do I exhibit care and how do I ensure that we are committed and going towards the core? Got it. Got it. Okay. I think um, what I could probably help you with is to start off with, with looking at kind of overall themes that I'm hearing from all you guys and then just give like a f short, like five, 10 minute kind of piece around that and then go into specifics with you guys. Um, I think the overall first thing is I love that you're being honest and vulnerable and real. That's the first step because right now, anyone that thinks they know all the answers is mistaken. Governments don't know the answers. And right now, if people are, oh, if the, the worst thing you can do right now is oversell confidence. Because if you oversell confidence, actually you create a lack of certainty. And you're seeing that in some governments across the world right now. They're overselling what's going on instead of being honest. And I think to me, the first thing of any leader is you see things as they are, not better than they are, not worse than they are, as they are. You know, everyone talks about positive thinking. I believe in positive thinking, but I don't believe in going into your yard and saying, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, there are weeds. You have to see things as they are and then create a vision of where you want to go. So I think the first thing is this, is be real and be honest. And I think if I can summarize what you guys are doing or summarize how I can support you and serve you today, the one thing that's common to everyone here is the one word, certainty. You're all in some way looking for certainty. You're looking for certainty of plans, certainty of exit strategies, certainty of mission, certainty of what's the right strategy, certainty of what's the right way to influence someone, certainty of what's the right way to engage students who don't have a chance to connect. All that is looking for certainty and I completely appreciate that because you come from an educa industry that's all about providing certainty. Why do parents come and pay you money to come to your school? To get certainty. To get certainty that their child will be educated, to get certainty that their child will have a bright future. They're coming to you for certainty, so you have to deliver certainty for them. You have to deliver certainty for your board. You have to deliver certainty for your employees. You have to deliver certainty for your, your kids you know, and your own families and certainty for yourself. And I'll tell you the number one thing right now is you have to choose how we're going to do that. Because if you are in a space right now, where, and a lot of you are doing this, and I'm, it's not you, I'm saying most people are doing this right now, we actually have the ability to handle uncertainty. How many of you, I know, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are parents? Right? Like I'm very interactive, so just put your hand up, okay, good. Right? If you're a parent, you know how to handle uncertainty. When that first child came along, you didn't know exactly what to do. You figured it out. There was uncertainty, and you figured out a way to handle it. By the time child number two or three came along, you're like, I got this, right? You knew what happened because you knew the road ahead. So that's the first thing. If you started a business, you've dealt with uncertainty. So I don't think the issue is dealing with uncertainty because you've dealt with it. Most people have. The challenge is before there was uncertainty in one area of life and the other areas that had certainty. Now what's happening is every area has uncertainty. Health has uncertainty. Your relationship has uncertainty. Uh, educating children has uncertainty. Every area is having uncertainty at the same time. And everyone's going through uncertainty. So how do you help people handle that? Well, the first thing I would say is we've got to, we've got to, the world has fundamentally changed. 
to think we're going to go back to the normal world again is an illusion. The world has fundamentally changed. It's changing their values. People are going to value their health now more than they ever did. I coach CEOs all the time. They go, I value my health. I can, in five minutes, do a values exercise with them. I'll figure out the health is number five and, and work is number one. I know if they have a chance after work, they won't go to the gym. Because their values say that's first and that's second. Value of health has gone up. Not just physical health, but mental health, emotional health has gone up. And if we don't invest in that, we are not adapting to where the world is. So to expect it to go back to normal is not the, not the choice. And you know this, the world has cycles. We go through seasons every time. A spring, a summer, a winter, a fall. Well, every season has a gift. And every season is, cy is cyclical. So we are going through in winter right now. But there will be a spring. The question is, is your school ready for that spring? Is your education system going to be ready for that spring? And do you have the tools and mindset, three things, mindset, strategy, and resources to handle winter? Because you can have all the strategy, but if, you have the, if everyone on your team has a different mindset, you're in trouble. I did a, a call with the leadership team the other day, a Zoom call with them, and I asked them one question. What's your mindset right now? Is it survive or is it thrive? And I ask you guys the same question. What's your mindset right now? Is it survive is it th or is it thrive? And there's no wrong answer. But you need to be clear on what that thinking is because there's a completely different strategy to survival mode and a completely different strategy to thrive mode. And if you're in thrive mode, but your leadership team and your staff are in survive mode, you'll be speaking different languages. You need to be aligned and on the same page and the same message. I'll tell you the number one thing right now that's so critically important in terms of your systems, internal communication. And I have a thing in my team, it's a thing I teach people all the time. At times of uncertainty, over-communicate. At times of uncertainty, over-communicate. And over-communicate doesn't just mean emails, it's, there's, there's different ways of engaging people. You know this, in learning styles in a classroom, there are three ways to engage someone. So, uh, let me you, Vishen, let me ask you a question. What did you eat for breakfast this morning? You're on mute, you're on mute. So, uh, breakfast tomorrow, today is dosa. Perfect. What did you eat for dinner last night? Muesli. That's my what, what did you do for your last birthday? I was in an ashram. Perfect. I'm asking you those questions because in those two minutes, I found out your learning style. So you are, there are three ways of learning, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic by doing and feeling, right? Practicing. So what is your, what do you think your learning style is? Is it visual, is it auditory, or is it kinesthetic? It depends on when you ask me. So I think a combination of all three, I would guess. Got it. Your, we, all have, we all can learn all three, but what's our optimum, right, is the key. So from you, your, high, your core, in terms of whether you optimize it or not, is visual. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I read your eye movements. When I asked you to remember things, I just asked you to remember three things, I looked at your eye movements, I studied that. Right? So that's important because if I'm a visual parent right now, I need a visual communication from you that gives me certainty. Mm -hmm. If I'm an auditory parent right now, I need an auditory connection with you that makes me feel certainty. If I'm a kinesthetic parent from you, I need a kinesthetic way to get that. I need something, give me things I can do, give me things I can know, give me things I can follow so I can action it. That gives me the sense of certainty. So everyone's different. And if you're just going in one direction, you're missing two styles. I, I coach teachers, all that. I coach parents, teachers, boards, everyone. I can't tell you how many classrooms I've been in where, where teachers have stood up there and they've engaged students on one, on one learning style because it's their learning style. So their auditory, so they speak in auditory. Or their visuals, so they're showing a lot of visuals. But you're losing a whole bunch of people in the class. So at a time where students are, are home, now more than ever, teachers need to be engaged at the highest level on how to engage people. Because you cannot spoon feed someone a curriculum. You have to engage someone. You know, we've all been to seminars where we've listened to someone for five minutes and wanted to hit our head against the wall. Knowledge is not power. Action is power. 
if you cannot make your, your students actually be engaged where they'll be with there with you, it's, it's complete useless. Screen time can be valuable time if you're going there for the right purpose. If you're going there for the wrong purpose, it's useless. I watch 10 minutes of the news every day. That's it, that's my limit and I cap it at that. I don't go to the news to collect fear, I go there to collect information. And that's my thing, I do it in the morning, I don't do it at night, so I'm not gonna let my mind go into a certain direction. I discipline my focus. So that's a key piece. Now, let me quickly give you context on how it helps you, and then I'll give you some tools, and then we can have a more of a chat. There are three paths to success, because that's ultimately what your kids are coming, students are coming to you for. That's why your parents are there, that's why your teachers are there, that's why everyone's there. So the first path is repeat after you with a bit of energy, self-doubter. Self-doubter. Come on, guys, self-doubter. Self-doubter. So we all know a self-doubter and been on the path of a self-doubter. And self-doubt is not an identity, it's a path. I may not be that, but I'm on that path right now. Self-doubter is I go for success, but as I don't get the results I want, my happiness with myself goes down and down and down and down and down. I coached a kid recently. I, I won't mention, of course, which school, but it's, it's confidential. But I coached a kid recently. Uh, he came to one of our camps. He was scoring a D in Spanish. And I work with him. He came to our camp. We told him some tools around it. And then I work with him privately. I kid you not, I got a message from him the other day. He's gone from a D to an A in Spanish. And I'm not bragging. It's because it wasn't because of his lack of intelligence. It's because of his lack of confidence and happiness with himself. So if you are not in a space where you can learn and absorb because you're doubting yourself, it won't go through. I can speak this from personal experience and I'm, I'm happy to be vulnerable on this call as well. I went to a school, old Harrow School, a boarding school, and at the age of 13, I was bullied. I was told I was stupid. I was told I was an idiot. I was, my first day of school, they dragged me out of my room and they smashed and broke my jaw. And they put a photo of me in the newspaper saying, voted least likely to succeed in life at the age of 13. I had rejected from every school there was when I applied, every university. I got a B, D, and an E in my A-levels. And five years later, with the grace of God and my amazing parents and amazing teachers, I, I went to Georgetown University and I graduated there with three degrees, history, English, psychology, all with honors, and a photo of me in a newspaper saying one of the 15 top students. I'm not saying it to brag, I'm saying I didn't suddenly become smarter. I was on a path that didn't allow me to optimize my best. And the path of self-doubters is one of massive uncertainty. Self-doubters have no certainty in themselves. So they question everything. They doubt everything. And if, I'll tell you right now, the people who are suffering from anxiety, whether it be students or people you know or anyone, are people who are on the self-doubt path. So if you stay on that path, you're going to be headed for trouble right now because there's so much doubt in the world and you're already on that path, it'll just magnify it. The second path is the achiever path, and we've all been taught this path. How many of you here have ever been told this? Have a goal, have a target, plan for it, achieve your goal, and then you'll achieve the goal and you get success and then you'll be happy. Who's been taught that? I have for sure. Perfect. All of you repeat after me. Rubbish. rubbish. I say that to you, I, I take rubbish because that was a model that worked 30, 40, 50 years ago. But it doesn't work today because there's so many demands on our time, so many areas we want to achieve in. And if you look on the graph there, we go for success and we all know this. We're all smart business people here. There's no straight line to success. But look at the right one. When I get the result, how do I feel? I feel amazing. When I don't, how do I feel? I feel terrible. So my emotions go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, according to the result. Guess what that's gonna lead to? Massive burnout, crash. Energy crash, stress crash. Everything is gonna happen and you will not be able to sustain success. This model of being an achiever worked on how to achieve success, but does not work on how to sustain success. Because there are two games of life. We all know this, the external game of success and the internal game, be happy with ourselves. This path will help you win the external game, not the internal game. And if you're on the achievers path right now, you're gonna be stressed. Why? Because you're not seeing results. 
Why? Because you don't know when results are going to come. So you're going to go up and down emotionally as this situation on the external happens, as all these plans that you had in place don't materialize the way you wanted them or expected them to, you're going to go through stress because you're going to go on that path. There's a third path. This is what I teach. Just put it there, the path of what they call the champion. And I'm not talking about the Dwayne Bravo song, champion. I'm talking about, you know, this is, this is a way of living life. So if you look there, the success path is going up. But the most important is happiness with yourself is come. To my Chennai friend uh, on this call, right, Bonnie, I Bonnie, can, yeah. Bonnie, I can share with you, right? MS Dhoni. Why, why is he one of India's best captains, Chennai Super King? Because he's calm. He's calm under pressure, right? It's his ability to, be, to, be, to not let the results go up and down emotionally that can then command him and be calm and centered as a leader. The biggest thing you need right now is to be calm and centered because if you can do that, you can respond. Mm -hmm. And responsibility is what you have, but responsibility is critically important. <laughs> Do you choose to respond with fear right now, with stress? The first thing I'll tell all of you is that all of you in some ways, and most people do this, what you're doing is you're stacking. So again, Vani, I'm going to come to you, or anyone, someone who's the Vishnu, you said you had a dosa right this morning, right? When you eat your dosa, Vishnu, do you eat the one dosa in one bite? No. I hope not. Okay, good. Right? You break it up into chunks. And right now what's happening is you guys are over chunking your minds, which is then overwhelming you. I've got this, 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 this stakeholder. And I, I understand because you've got a lot of responsibility. So you're stacking these things and therefore it creates uncertainty. What I would do with your teams is literally get them and go, what are problems we can solve? Most people, unfortunately, define problems in a way that are not solvable. What are the solvable problems we have? And let's chunk them down and solve them. Each one we solve will give us certainty. Rather than overwhelming ourselves with massive uncertainty and stacking. The piece I'm going to show you today, and I'll give you a few pieces of content around it, and then I'll answer any questions and apply it, is I have a method to, to create to get on this path of champion. For, and it has to be organization leaders, has to be teachers. Everyone needs to be on the champion path right now. And you have a choice out of this virus situation. Are you going to be a school of self-doubters and achievers or champions? And you have a choice. Where are you going to grow from this? Because right now, I'll tell you right now, one I mentioned before the call, my goal is to help India become a nation of 1 billion champions. But unfortunately, that's what our potential is, but we're not that. We're a nation right now of 1 billion achievers and self-doubters and some champions. And we need to be that. We need to educate our children how to get there. So uh, the tool I'll share with you today, and then we can get into questions around it, is one tool. And just put my, my, my model up there for a second, Ash. The pyramid. So I have a pyramid. This is how do you create organizational certainty. It starts with an identity, right? You need to know, Narayana Schools, what is our identity? And have clarity on the identity. Vishnu, you mentioned mission and vision right your mission and vision is next in that piece if that's a if you have that inner certainty as an organization and clear on your identity clear on your mission needs this is what i'm going to talk about today the needs of who the needs of your uh teachers the needs of your parents the needs of your stakeholders your needs your own family's needs you need to know how to meet those needs right now in the most efficient way then after that are your values, your, your culture, right? The clearer you are in your culture right now and the identity of your culture, the more certainty it'll give you. Beliefs. What, I asked you a question on the questionnaire. What does this mean? Some of you said it's a time to grow. Some of you said it's a time to reflect. So you can use any word. What we believe something to be is how we're going to feel it. I don't use the word self-isolation. I use the word self-growth. This is not a time of self-isolation, it's self-growth. I changed the language because it's gonna make me feel differently. And after that is your strategy and action. So if you look at the bottom, stressing about strategy and action without having alignment on the areas above will stress you and not create long-term certainty. 
What I would have you do is spend time, I'm happy to chat with you off, is how to create that certainty at the top of your organization. Or if you have that, remind people of that certainty because that's what's going to get you through this. And from that, we will decide our plan and our strategy. You cannot control what doctors do. You cannot control what governments do. All you can control is the, is the kingdom that you supervise. And the tool I'm going to show you today to help you around that, that will help everyone on this call and we can go into it is needs. So very quickly, there are six human needs that everyone has. A first need is a need for certainty. How many of you here get certainty by having a plan? How many of you here get certainty by having faith? Right? Or you get certainty by controlling things or influencing things. We have many ways to get certainty. I can also get comfort and certainty right now from overeating. Right? That's a, why do people call it comfort eating? You're going there, you're needing certainty, so you go to that. I can take someone off smoking about three hours. Why? Because smoking, the addiction of smoking is addicted to getting comfort. There's so many things we do to go there. Why does a child sometimes go to go to screen? They're going there sometimes to get comfort because they're stressed. So they want to play a game or they want to engage themselves. The other need we have, but if I told you something right now, if I told you, Puneet, I would give you the same food every day for the rest of your life, you wear the same clothes, how would you feel? Nothing would change. Everything would be the same thing every day. The same thing every day. How would you feel? Uh, After I feel that? like I'm in prison, I feel. I feel like I'm in prison. Okay, I love that, right? So variety, God bless her, God bless it, is one of our needs. We all need variety and we need uncertainty. Here's the crazy thing about life. Uncertainty is actually one of our needs. The challenge is we don't embrace that need when we in the right context. Uncertainty is actually one of our needs because a child who just gets taught the same way all the time will not be engaged. In today's world, you need to engage them. I coach a lot of kids with ADD or ADHD. A lot of times, it's, it's, a lot of kids are misdiagnosed. Actually, what they have is the, the child is not being getting enough. The top number one need is variety, and they're not getting enough uncertainty variety in their education. So they're finding other ways to get it because they can't focus. The third need we have is to feel significant and important. Don't we all want to feel special, different, unique? When you call a parent and say, look, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of your child. I want to really connect with you. Don't they feel special? When you call a teacher or a principal and say, listen, I want to just connect with you personally. I'm not sending you an email. I want to call you. That makes them feel significant. The fourth need is love and connection. Why are we all on these, <laughs> these, these devices? Main reason, love and connection. I hope most people are going there for connection, not love. But it's the main thing is this, right? If if you, don't, if you don't feel connected to that right now, people freak out today about, their, if I took their phone and took it away for an hour, they'd freak out because their phone is their source of love and connection. I always tell people, most people today have a, a better relationship with their phone than they do with their spouse. If I take their spouse away for an hour, they're okay, but their phone, they won't handle it. Right? And the fifth thing is growth. We all want to grow and improve. And finally, to make a difference. So I'm sharing these six things with you to ask you one question. Take what you just shared with me and ask yourself, what are the number one needs of the following people? Yourself, if you can't meet your own needs, you can't meet anyone's needs. Your family, your parents, your teachers, your students, your staff, your board, they will all have some needs probably similar but different, and also different recipes for meeting those needs. You need to know those recipes. You need to know what would give students certainty right now. You need to know what, because what you may think gives students certainty right now may not be what actually gives them certainty. A lot of times we think we're providing a need, but we're not. I did a culture audit at a company, and they think they're giving their staff all the right trainings they need. When I did the audit, we came back and we found out 
they're blowing money and wasting resources because they're not giving the staff, they haven't t taken the time to really understand what are the needs of their staff and therefore they're not, their, their strategy and their resources is not being used, optimized. And the number one thing I tell you right now is optimize your resources. Your financial resources, your talent resources, you need to know your core strength as a leader. I have to chat with you offline in another session, but what's your core strength and how do you optimize your time around that? Because your time is the most valuable asset you have. So my question to you is this, at what level, what are your top two needs right now? I think Anand, I can, I can take a shot at this. Please. Um, my needs were growth and contribution, uh, maybe a couple of months ago and suddenly after being locked down like this, needs have suddenly evolved and changed to things like uh, variety and, and comfort. And these are things that have taken precedence suddenly. So, so I thought I had it all figured out. But now it's, it's, it's again changed a lot of things uh, in the mind. And that's my personal battle also that me as a person also is starting to evolve during, uh, during this time and realize that some things are probably more important than some other things. While I still feel growth and contributions still play an important role in my life at least, is some of the other things also have taken up uh, uh, importance. So if you ask me a direct question right now, I probably wouldn't be able to classify them or in, in, a, in a priority order. But uh, I think that's evolving and that's where the uncertainty is coming from. We thought it all, we thought we all had it planned out. Now suddenly things have uh, yes. thrown, thrown differently. So let me ask you a question, Puneet. Was mm -hmm. growth and contribution your number one needs before or was it number one values? And let me explain the difference. Mm -hmm. Values is something I want. Needs is something I must have. Uh, I would still say it was a need for me, but... Yes. Uh, I still think that for me, continuously improving and growing in life is, is, is very, very important. And that's how I, I measure that. myself. And that's how, and contribution meaning what was I useful to society in some manner. And I, I put growth and contribution parallel to each other when they say that, look, if there is growth, I'm sure I'm contributing to society productively. Yes. In, in that sense. And Bill Gates, Bill Gates is the outstanding example of, of yes. you can achieve that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is a great opportunity. And by the way, any crisis or situation challenges us to go in and reflect on who we are, which is what you're doing. Yep. Your needs and your, I, I told you the world has changed. Your, yep. Everyone's values and needs in the world were in a certain order, but they're rechanging orders as this is happening. Yep. And you need to adapt to that new world, let's call it a hierarchy of needs or your students' new hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is driving you today? Right now? Uh, I know the answer, but I'm asking you. I think I think it's it's still it's still very uncertain as in I don't know what's driving me right now. For me, driving me right now, you said survival or growth. I'm looking a, a lot more, I don't know if it's the right right answer to give, but I don't know, I'm looking a lot more survival right now. Get through all of this, come out of this unscathed and reassess, replan and, and carry forward things. That's how I'm looking at it right now. So uh, I can't put my finger exactly on, on uh, what's driving me right now, but a lot of uh, survival and move forward, reassess plan. These are the kind of emotions that are that. Got it. What, what is your way of getting certainty? I get certainty when what? I guess uh, when I'm thinking about things and I discuss with people and we're able to, to formalize uh, a plan on that, or they agree with me and we're able to take things forward on that. And yes. uh, or they uh, they discuss and argue with me, debate with me, and say, "Look, this is not what it is. That's what it is. This this is the right way forward." I get probably a kind of certain feeling that look, maybe this is the right path that we need to. Discussion probably gives me a lot more certainty. I think. Got it. So if you had a, if you had a teacher or someone who just agreed with you but didn't discuss or didn't engage, you'd be like you wouldn't feel that sense of engage, mental engagement and, and that wouldn't create that sense. I, it sounds to me you get a lot of your certainty from the discussion process, the collaboration process, and then, that, then it kind of clicks with you and you go, I got the certainty, let's go here. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's how I work. Brilliant. Brilliant. So what if right now, instead of a battle in your head, as you, as you use those language, what if it's a discussion in your head? Mm -hmm. And you use it as a discussion as I'm not, gonna, I'm not throwing myself off. All I'm doing is I'm discussing with myself to, back, to, to argue back and forth, to then find it to create my own certainty. But the key in what you said is the certainty comes ultimately from you. Yes. And to answer your question about, you said, is it the right thing, survival versus thriving, you know, that question you asked. What if it's both? 
What if your what if your philosophy now is survive to grow, survive to thrive? You don't have to choose that or that. You can be a combo strategy, but you're clear that that's the strategy you're going to come from. It's internally communicated that's the strategy you're going to come from amongst your core stakeholders, and that's where you're going to that's your focus. But I'll tell you one thing: you cannot be in a even in survival mode. You cannot be helping your organization with survival mode if you're in survival mode, mm -hmm. right? So you've got to produce the highest level of certainty right now in yourself to then say, I got this, I'm here, let's do this. I, and because from that place of certainty, if certainty of your needs goes down, you can do that. And my one suggestion to you would be, what if right now you made contribution your number one need? Because that's who you are. I believe that's who you are, your absolute core. You're, you are a growth con contribution. And I would actually suggest to you, don't switch your needs. Come from growth. Embrace the growth. And use this time to go, I'm, the certainty I need is within me. I'm going to come from a mindset of growth and contribution so that I can deliver certainty for others. So my growth and contribution is not about delivering growth for others right now. It's about delivering certainty first. But I myself are going to come from growth and contribution because that's where I feel most alive, most engaged, and I'm not stressed and fearful. I've talked to you a couple of times on the call, and when you've been in this, I've seen you in, in different states. When you've been in Puneet, let's go and, and, and make things happen, right? State, you're relaxed, and there's this power in you. When you're not, your right shoulder right here, right trapezius muscle gets tense. So I'm telling you this because I can see this, I can watch this. And body language, when you get on that Zoom call with your team, your body language is going to communicate that certain, not overconfidence, but inner certainty. So quickly tell me right now, when's the last time you felt absolutely at your most peak level of certainty? Where you knew the answers, you found the answers. Never. Uh, honestly, I, uh, pardon? Sorry. When, when you felt certain, when you felt at your, at your best, Anytime, we've all had moments of peak performance, right? All good days. When is the time you've been at your best and you've thought, I got this, I'm in charge, all those things? I would say that, you know, maybe a couple of months before all this started, uh, you know, things were going really, really well. We were hitting all our targets. It was all work related. Yes. Uh, um, you know, and uh, I think that's when I felt most confident that things are going to scale, that the graph is really looking, uh, really looking up. And, uh, you know, suddenly all this situation uh, came in. Uh, Got it. So, yeah. so put it in those moments. What did you believe about yourself? What was the feeling inside of you? I can do this. I've got this. Let's do this. We're going to make it happen. What was the feeling? What was the thought? It's exactly that. So I can do this. We, we've got this was the primary feeling. I think we, we've got it figured out. We know what we're doing now. Uh, we know the formula, the formula that we've been working on for all these years. We yeah. figured it out. And now there's nothing to stop us. That, level, that, that was a certain feeling that we had. How many right. of you, by the way, on this call, Vishnu, right, Avani, all you guys, right, are seeing a different energy right now in Puneet? The minute I, we got him to remember this moment, how many of you are seeing a different level of certainty <laughs> coming through him right now? Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So just be a favor, my brother. Take your, squeeze your fist right now and say, I've got this. I've got this? I've got this. I've got this. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out. If you woke up every morning and did that and anchored yourself to that state, because you see the old Puneet thought, when I get the results, it puts me in that state. This new Puneet is going to grow out of this whole situation is the one who puts himself in that state first and then creates the results. When I, I work with the English cricket team, I work with two guys, Josh Butler and Ben Stokes before the World Cup. They both called me up the night before and they said, AC, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We work so hard. And I told him, I said, Jocelyn Stokesy, I said, tomorrow, 22 people are going to go on that field thinking winning a trophy is going to make them a champion. But two people are going to be different. And they're you and Joss. And you're going to be different because you're going to walk on that field already a champion. And then you're going to get a trophy. The champion path is not the result doesn't make me feel certain. I'm certain. And that's my core is drives me, my spirit drives me, and that drives who I am. So I saw your spirit, I saw your core in that moment right now. 
that's the guy, Mr. Unstoppable, Mr. whatever you want to call that guy, you know, but Puneet, Puneet the Great, whatever you call the guy, right? <laughs> whatever that guy is, is the guy who's going to be driving the thing. And that guy doesn't mean I have all the answers, but I have certainty. You're telling your brain, I've got this. What you're doing is you're commanding your mind to find the solution. And you're now directing your mind rather than fighting in your mind. You're now not the, in a battle, but you're the general. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. Helpful? Very helpful. I feel a little more confident now. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, cool. Um, anyone else? So, so, uh, so what's going to be your focus right now, your number one need right now? By the way, if you have that certainty, won't you get growth? Won't you, won't, won't that, if, you, if you build that up every day, you have more chance to focus on growth and focus on contribution to give certainty to others. Fully agree. And I'm, when you, uh, I think when you put it clearly like that, it makes a lot more sense and it makes me feel a little bit more confident that that's the way we should look at it, not in a fearful mode that yes. something may go wrong. Yes. yes, we know what we're doing. It's that same feeling that we had a, maybe a couple of months ago. Yes. We should try to bring back now and look at it from that lens itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome, man. Um, maybe we can go around the room uh, yes. because we don't have that much time left. Sure. Who wants to go next in terms of the top needs? Well, I have, uh, I don't know, I'm going to respond to my top needs, but I have a view which is a bit antithesis to what you just shared. Uh, the way I look at it is, it, and, I mean, I, I kind of connected with what Rita shared, that for me, it is absolutely important at this stage to share with our community that we don't have all the answers. Yes. And it's okay to tell them that I am scared, I am figuring out, but it's yes. get of this together. So I have this view, yeah, I, I, I agree with you when you said growth and contribution are the two important things at this phase. But I also feel I don't want to be a champion. I don't want to have this need to be successful or confident. It is okay to figure out. It's okay to fall down. Uh, and yes. I'm at with that. Yeah. Can I, can, I, can I just make a distinction? Yeah. Champion doesn't mean you have all the answers. And champion doesn't mean you're confident. Champion means I'm willing to win the inner game with myself. I'm willing to be honest with myself first about how I'm really feeling. And I'm willing to explore that and go in and discover. And here's the difference. When I told Puneet, I've got this, I'm not motivating him. Up. I hate the word motivation, by the way. It feels like a nice pump up for an hour, but then you forget an hour later. I'm not motivating, I'm activating him. I'm reminding him of who he already is. I've got it doesn't mean I know it. It means I will use my mind. I'm commanding my mind to find the answer. And it's okay to say, guys, we don't all have the answer right now. But if we come from fear, we'll never find the answer. Let's put ourselves in a state of certainty and of faith where we can have faith in ourselves, in our ability to find the answers. That's to me being a champion right now. Overselling it, like I mentioned at the beginning, is not being a champion. I would say to what Puneet, Puneet, what Puneet speaks to himself about versus his staff or team is different. To himself, he's going to be in the best state. But when he speaks to them, he can be like, look, I've, I've gone through this. I've gone through moments of doubt. And here's how I've got to the other side. That will show his stuff how to make the shift themselves. So I want to make sure it's just clear that distinction. It doesn't mean pretend. It means be real with you and then communicate. When you make the shift, your team will make the shift. And you'll show them how by your example. Hmm. I'm not, what I'm teaching you today is not stuff I'm just, Theoretical, I've gone through an earthquake. I've used this. I've lived this. Mm. I've gone, I've lived what I teach. So it's the same thing here. When you live it, your team will, will shift. You want to go next? Cool. Who's next? I don't mind going next. So in terms of where my mindset is right now, I think, I think the two most important needs that I'm facing would be definitely some amount of certainty and the, the love and connection. Um, and I'm luckily, uh, you know, not alone in a house. So I do feel the love and connection around me. So I have that right now. But I do feel the need to connect with my teachers, with my students, with whoever it may be. I need that connection. And I think the certainty piece for me comes in when 
you know, when I make the plans, like, so I feel much more comfortable today. I had a team meeting with my staff and we said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do A, B, C, and this is our deadline. So that gives us something that we have control over, something that, you know, um, I know we're building towards the right path. I don't have all the answers, but I do know I can work on this. And that gives me a sense of calm and purpose. Lovely, lovely. You know, I really love what is, and it's a great learning for all of us. To say all of us should be growth and contribution right now is wrong because we all have different needs. So if a Puneet growth and contribution works, but for you, certainty and love and connection works. So Vishnu, it's something else. It's okay to, this is really important. When you understand yourself, you'll now know this is, this is where I'm most effective. So that's powerful that you're going to come from love and connection, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing in this for all of us, our needs sometimes was because there are needs we think sometimes that our needs equals everyone's needs. And so what happens is we create a blind spot. So the growth people, maybe you need to also think, hey, there are a lot of people who need love and connection for me right now. Because I'm so focused on growth, I may not be giving the level of love and connection they need. Maybe I need to do that more. And vice versa, love and connection people, maybe there are people in the team that say, hey, I want to figure out ways I can grow now more. Okay, how do I engage those people to make sure that those needs are there? Because your entire staff, and I, God bless you guys, you have, you know, somewhere 50, 100,000 couple, right, a huge number of people you're serving. And each of them have different needs in different orders. So you need to know how do you communicate in a way that the certainty person feels that certainty, the growth person feels like, hey, my future's not dead. I've got a, there's a path to that. Your love and connection person feels like I'm there with you. It's so important. For, on a business level, I share this with a, with, a, with a company I work with. In general, if people are, I make it simple for you. In general, if someone's in survival mode, they usually need certainty and they need love and connection. And when they're in thrival mode, they need growth and they need contribution. I told this company, I said, divide all your clients and divide them into two sections and have a strategy for both because everyone needs both right now. But you need to know who's on what thing. You need to know everyone's needs right now, even from an email or a message back or surveys you can do right now, or you can conduct those, you can actually elicit that and then say, in general, our parents are favoring this need and here's how to meet these needs. Ah, that's what we're gonna focus on. In general, our teachers are saying is those needs. Everything, when I do a culture audit, you simplify everything into these six buckets. Mm -hmm. And if you can engage people right now on their top two needs, you don't have to meet all six, but on their top two or top three, you can make them feel a sense of certainty. And that's the most important thing right now is not, I got all the answers, but I'm going to meet your needs. A parent doesn't know all the answers to their child, but they know they're going to find a way of meeting their child's needs. Yep. So keep your love and connection there, keep your certainty and know that, hey, okay, there are other people also there on the growth side, contribution side. One thing there for you guys, and I, I, I do webinars by, for, for kids uh, every Saturday for teenagers. You guys are welcome to send any kids there. I'm telling you, one of the things that kids need right now is significance. They're all feeling in so many ways that if I don't achieve this, because we're for achiever culture, I won't be significant, my career, my dreams, my that. For students, I don't think certain, uh, for them, I would say certainty and significance and love and connection are very big three, three drivers and growth as well. But significance is a high, a high need. For a parent, significance is a need because they want to know that you're taking care of their child's needs. If I'm significance driven as a parent, if I'm certainty driven, I just want that certainty right now. But in general, I say t uh, parents are coming from certainty from my all my webinars. So teachers definitely from certainty because it's their jobs. It's there. It's so many different pieces in there as well. And your stakeholders, your board, well, you know the answer. Are they coming more from growth right now? Are they coming from certainty? Are they coming from combination? Like we mentioned with Puneet, is it, is it survive and thrive? So I hope that helps you in, in terms of your piece. What I would do right now is literally for yourself, two things. I'm just, I'm just going to generalize so everyone can get a thing. I would one create a plan of how are you going to meet, find out your top need and meet your own need every day. If you're meeting your own need right now at top 10, you'll feel good. That's my first mm -hmm. recommendation. 
Second, do surveys for the respective groups of people you have and stakeholders and translate the findings of those surveys into these six needs. So then you know the most effective strategy to hit. Mm -hmm. Should we hear from Roshan and Trista also? Please, please, please. please. Yeah, sure. Roshan. I'm, I'm kind of uh, in, a, in a state of maybe a certain kind of contentment at the moment. I think the pace of life before this was hyper intense, you know, working 14 plus hours a day, seven days a week, traveling around, multiple flights every week. Um, and I mean, all of that was building up, you know, there was a long planning phase, which was just literally as the lockdown started about to go into a execution phase. So missing out on perhaps the excitement of that. Um, but, you know, now, now I'm still working, but it's, it's, you know, seven, eight hours a day. It's not hyper intense work. It's relatively calm. Um, and that gives me a lot of time for things that I otherwise would love to do, but don't get a chance to do like reading or time spent catching up with old friends and family yes. uh, phone or whatever. Um, you know, I, I was born and raised in the UK. I have a lot of friends there who I was yes. doing with, but I've been spending a lot of time in contact with them and, uh, yeah, and, and, and reflection and planning as well. So, so I think there are positives. And I think because although yes, there is a lot of uncertainty, I myself raise that as a challenge, but at the same time, although we don't know when, we know that at some point things will go back to normal. Um, you know, there might be new, new ways of thinking about the world, but fundamentally the, the school is gonna go back to running as it was. All the things which were planned and need to be executed will be executed, even if it's delayed. Yes. Uh, so in that sense, there's also space for contentment. Absolutely. I love this phrase, which is God's delays are not God's denials. Mm. Right. Which is, and we sometimes think that we think that we're not seeing it. Let me tell you something. If you, your dream is still there, your vision of whatever you wanted to create. One thing I do, and I'm happy to create this for you. I do a visualization every day. I recommend it literally a five minute morning exercise of visualizing what you want. That in itself will give you certainty. Because right now what happens is there's so much stuff in the way and so much bombardment of so much things, we lose sight of that certainty. And I think that if you want to engage your staff is to engage them on, that's why if you remember my triangle, identity, mission, vision, right at the top. Vision is a very powerful way of creating certainty right now. Because it gives people a sense of a future they can see beyond the clouds. I work with people all the time who are old. And I'll tell you right now, one, if you have elderly parents or family members, the biggest thing you can do right now is give them a compelling vision. Because if they have nothing to live for, their body will literally start shutting down. You need to create a compelling vision to fire up the subconscious mind, every part of you, to fight for something, live for something, dream for something, go for something. So I love that, Roshan. What, what are your top two needs? Um, I think um, contact with people. Yes. No, Avoidance of isolation. Connection. So let me ask you a question. It's a beautiful little gift right now. Maybe, uh, were you pre-COVID, were you getting that need of love and connection met as much as you are now? I think maybe pre-COVID, I, I didn't recognize the need as much because I was so absorbed in, in the work. Can we give this guy like the biggest thumbs up right now? I, I love that. Brilliant, right? And that's the perfect thing is I was in such a, that mode that I didn't focus on my own needs, which actually is love and connection. And that's, and I think, like I said, you mentioned earlier, this is a great time to us to actually discover who we are at our core and what we're going to make our needs from now on. And I think it's a beautiful little gift that you got from this, which is, hey, love and connection is important. So even when we go back to the normal world, I'm going to make the show that I create that time to satisfy that need within myself so I can serve others. Love that. Beautiful. And finally, last but not least, I think my two needs are uh, growth and significance. Yes. Um, but I also was wondering about, uh, you know, the idea between survival and thriving and surviving. Yes. And, um, as a leader, you sort of, you know, why would you choose survival when you can thrive? And, you know, how do you really make that choice? And uh, yes. Uh, what really is the delta between the two? Great question. Uh, Ash, can you put up the life cycle, please, for a second? So 
to me, what one of the decision makers of whether I go the survival route or the thrive route depends on where my organization is in its life cycle, which is a huge piece in this. So we can put this on the share the screen right now. So every business has a life cycle that goes through. Every person has a life cycle. Every human being right, has a life cycle. Your students have a life cycle. So for a company, right, toddler is, right, I'm cash flow is an issue. All those are happening. Teenagers, what I call go-go mode. So you're running, 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 running. You're trying to do as much as you can, but you don't take the time to put those, those systems in. You're in high growth, but don't have those things. Young adult, you're taking the time to do those things. Zone, your your peak, and a peak zone company can do three things, and it's important. They meet the need, they have the system to meet the needs of three groups of people. Everyone just we have to meet ice. We have to meet ice. 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 <laughs> Come on, ice. 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 Sorry, you're on mute. Ice. Ice. Okay. So ICE, I stand for, is investor satisfaction, customer, employee satisfaction. Simple. Right? You have, you have three needs of people that need to be satisfied. And if we translate in terms of we're looking at, at schools, these are the people we work with when we work with organizations. It's three groups of people. So a zone of maximization organization. Like, for example, you guys have told me how big you are and what scale you are. But if I were to figure out where you are in your life cycle, I would need to dig in with you on three things. Because knowing where you are in your life cycle is critically important. Because each life stage has three sets of problems. Normal, abnormal, and threatening. If you don't know where you are in your life cycle, you won't know what, prob what problem is where. And you have to align where you are with where the industry is in its life cycle. Because you may be a zone of maximization organization of schools, but, you're, but the industry may be in aging or in midlife crisis right now. So you need to align that and also align where you are in this. So to answer your question, I think the biggest thing is this. If you're, in, if you're a toddler or teenager right now, you have to be in survival mode. If you're not in survival mode right now and you're thinking of thrive mode right now, but you're in teenager, you're in trouble. If you're a zone, you, you, to me, young adult and zone can look at survive and thrive. Put some basics around survive and then let's push us into, into thrive mode. If you're in midlife towards aging, again, you're in survive mode. You gotta get in survive mode to bring yourself back, to stabilize yourself and then get back to the zone of maximization. And I could talk to you offline of how to do that and what is the zone and how do you measure those pieces but those three things, it's not just, am I meeting these needs, but do I have the systems, processes, and people to consistently deliver those needs? Steve Jobs, I work with Apple. Steve Jobs passed away, but Apple still had the systems to meet the needs of all three groups of people. That's why they're in the zone. And zone doesn't mean peak. Zone is a continuous area of improvement, to use Bonnie's phrase from earlier. A continuous area of growth and improvement. So I love your mindset of growth, and I think that's the right mindset to have if your company is in those spaces, your organization. I hope that answers the question and helps give at least a five-minute answer to that question. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Are there any other questions? Or if not, I've got like a centering exercise to help you with. Has this been helpful today? I think what I would just take is I would take this tool of, of needs. I would literally, and I can give you a, I can send you a kind of a thing around it. I would literally just start looking at the different people and asking yourself at what level, what are these people's needs? And then at what level are we meeting these needs right now? And if we're meeting at a level five, how do we meet at level six? Are we meeting at level four? How do we meet at level five? And literally look at continuous improvement and growth. And instead of trying to do everything right now, I would focus on one need, one sector, and say, what are we going to do to meet, get that need from here to here in this period of time? If you can get people from four to five in certainty in the next few weeks, that's a huge difference. Four to six is a huge difference. So you, don't, you may not go to 10, but get grow right now and put a plan together, realign your plan, 
and ask yourself the old plan, what needs was it giving? What's the new plan going to be that's going to now give me a different set of needs and for different groups of people? Um, I have, like I I have a chat. question. Yes, yes. Which is a lot of times people are not necessarily aware enough about themselves to identify what their top needs are. They might find it difficult choosing or prioritizing. So do you have any, you know, survey that you made or something like that, which you could share, which might yes. be helpful for us to get that out? Sure. So we can, we can speak kind of one-on-one that I've got certain different tools, but once I know what your needs are, I can customize it for that. But absolutely, no, very few people are going to go, hey, that's my number. You're going <laughs> to you got to ask them questions. So the, the questionnaire I sent to you, from that, I knew all of your top two needs. But I never asked mm -hmm. you your top two needs on that questionnaire. So I elicited it from the questions I answered to give me a sense. So when I came on this call today, I go, okay, some of you in high certainty mode, but I could tell how some of you in growth mode, which is why I then customized this around survival and thrival. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So happy to have that, that conversation and, 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 and create that because getting that, that is the difference right now in, and by the way, it's the same for your own children because right now we're so focused on so many people. We also got to take care of the people we have in our own home, their needs. And I'll tell you the one thing as well is key distinction. Everyone today is about time. And let me tell you something. Time is useless as a, if you're trying to, if you're trying to manage time by controlling time, you'll be stressed because it's only 24 hours a day. Don't manage your time, manage your energy. Because energy is infinite. I can give my child five minutes of my time where I'm meeting their top two needs and that's more value than two hours of me being on my phone distracted and not connected with them. It's quality of time and ability to say, what is that person's needs? Literally for me right now in managing my Fian you know, to a wedding, I was supposed to get married. So <laughs> for me, I'm, you know, I, I told my fiance, I'm probably gonna have a we we webinar, you know, instead of a webinar. Um, but right now, for me, it's like, how do I speak to her, meet her needs? I got clients, I got to meet their needs. And my first thing is, if I go one hour with someone, 30 minutes with someone, five minutes with someone, what are their needs and how I meet them? That's my, that's my thought process every time I engage. So that I'm not stressed about the amount of time I'm giving them, but I'm trying to focus on the most value I can give them and their needs will tell me their values and what is valuable to them. Mm. I know that's helpful for you guys in terms of managing your own time. So it's important to basically ask questions and understand the needs of the people that you're closely connected with. Absolutely. Assuming your needs are their needs. Absolutely. Because what they, and, and also remember that even within say certainty, their way, their, their recipe for it could be different. For you, certainty comes from maybe higher level stuff, but for them, it's maybe more granular, more, again, there's a piece of content I haven't got time to share today on whether they're what I call an artist, an entrepreneur, a producer, a manager. So their nature, if I'm more of a manager by nature, I will want certainty more in a way that's a system I can run. But if I'm more of an artist or an entrepreneur, I want certainty more from a place of understanding the vision. That gives me more certainty. So this fine, I'm, I'm giving this in a, an hour webinar, but there's a lot of fine tuning to this, but I'm at least giving you the concept so you can take some action towards it. And the first action is understand yourself and then look at your most immediate people around you and say, what are the top two needs? And how do I meet their needs at a higher level? Okay. I hope that's helpful. Yes. Really. It's an hour webinar, like I said. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> and we got, and by the way, you got, you know, six different people here with of different needs. So I'm trying to give you the most I can in the in this time that serves all. But of course, happy to chat more one to one and go into more kind of a deep dive on these things. Okay, so I would uh, um, like to, you know, first of all, thank all our wonderful panelists for having come and shared and, you know, um, you know, given their time. And of course, uh, I'm super, super grateful. And I think we all are super grateful to you, Anand, for uh, taking us through this webinar and kind of inspiring us now at a time when uh, we need, you know, to be inspired. And Barthi, can I ask you for 20 seconds to give everyone a tool that they can help that maybe will help them. Please, please, please do. 
Everyone grab your left wrist. Okay. Just close your eyes. And if you're watching this at home or wherever you are at work, close your eyes, please. Don't fall asleep, but close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Deep breath in. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Keep your eyes closed. And just repeat after me. Peace, peace, peace. Keep your hand on your pulse, on your left hand. And say, peace, peace, peace. Peace. You can say shanti, 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 peace, 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 whatever works for you. Breathe in, breathe out. Just hold the pulse and say peace, peace, peace. And as you do that, keep your eyes closed. And I want you to remember a happy memory or a time you felt certain or a time you felt loved or a time you gave love or a time you felt significant or a time you grew, whatever was a happy memory for you, or a time you contributed, see that happy memory right now. Feel it, hear it, connect to it. Breathe in, and out, and just say peace, peace, peace. And keep your eyes closed and have a happy future memory. What is life going to look like after this is all over? What kind of leader are you going to show up as? Who's going to grow out of this? What kind of certainty are you going to create for your team, for your parents, for your teachers, for your students? Visualize it now. See that memory like it's already happened. Feel the certainty of that in you. And breathe in and have faith in that. Take a photo of that in your mind. And feel that happiness. Feel that centeredness. Feel that contentment. Feel that certainty. Breathe in. Breathe out. And just say peace, peace, peace. And now remember a time you've been at your absolute best when you've had the most certainty. What did you believe that day? What did you feel about yourself that day? What did you hear that day? What did you see that day? See it, hear it, feel it right now. Put yourself back in that moment. How did you stand that day? How did you breathe that day? How did you feel that day? Put yourself in that state right now. And say in your own mind what you said to yourself, I've got this, I'm in charge, I can make this happen. I'll find the way. What did you believe? Say it, feel it in your own mind right now. Breathe in, breathe out. And just say peace, peace, peace. You'll see what's possible if you show up at your best. See that future vision. Hear it, feel it. Peace, peace, peace. Open your eyes. How do you guys feel? Good. Very good. Good, yeah. You bring good. a centeredness in you, and this is. Thing. When you touch the pulse, it helps on a physiological level, and then the visualization gives a sense of certain, a psychological level in terms of the certainty. And the combination of doing it is important, and it's important because the brain, to be present, a lot of times what stops us from being present is we're in the past or in the future. But if we can control that through an exercise, I guess it centered us to be in the present, and if we're in the present, we take the time to really know what a person needs and then able to help them. So, so I want to get, share that as an exercise people can do daily to help them. Thank you, that was amazing. Pleasure. Thank you. All right, so shall we wrap this up, Anand? Sure. 
Yeah. So thanks everyone. Thank you so much. I hope this was beneficial. It was really nice to see all of you all again. And I think we should, yeah, all the young education people should like keep coming up with new ideas that, you know, kind of bring us together. And uh, I, you know, thanks a lot, Anand, for giving us an opportunity to come together and collaborate and ideate. And I hope this helped everyone. It did. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much for thank organizing you, that team. Thank you, Anand, for this lovely session. Thank you, Anand. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Bye. guys. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye. See you guys.